I think like you gotta go through things and you gotta have mistakes in your life for you to um, be able to make the right moves. You know what I'm saying? All right, yes, indeed, man. This is Expeditiously. I'm your host, Tip T.I. Harris. Now, what we do here, we gather to have important discussions with people who are relevant to the discussion that can assist the generation and the community and the culture in moving forward. Uh, My guest today is a rapper from Brooklyn who got his break when he performed on DJ Clue's Hot 97 radio show. He then signed to Clues Electra Supported at the time. Desert Storm label scored his first top 40 pop hit, We Can't Deny It, featuring the late great Nate Dogg. Right out of the gate in 2001, instantly established himself as a rising East Coast rap star with a combination of street savvy and pop crossover appeal. Uh, pop crossover appeal. His debut album, Gil. His debut album, Ghetto Fabulous, reached the top 10 of the Billboard 200 and included a second top 40 single, Young and Holla Back. By the end of the year, he returned with Street Dreams. His first two albums were certified platinum. His hits as a featured artist continued to pile up as he did collabs with the likes of Christina Milian, Lil Mo, Lil Wayne, Neo, the list goes on and on. Now, all of these things are extremely important that he did in music and in business. However, I happen to know him outside of that, and I appreciate him and respect him for the things he's done outside of the industry. Without further ado, please welcome to Expeditiously, my partner, Fabulous. What's up, Tim? What's happening, G? What's going on, man? Man, cool and cool. I'm up here expeditiously. You understand. In the building. (laughs) Yes, indeed. Mm. Now... You, much like me, dropped an album, your mm-hmm. first album, debuted 2001. Yeah. Mine fell to the wayside, wasn't quite, you know what I'm saying, acknowledged, didn't have the label support, didn't really get the attention it deserved. Yours, however, skyrocketed and shot you directly into the stratosphere. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you think you've been able to do to keep you here? Um... The number one word I would probably say is adapt. Uh, um, I think the game, the game changes every every once in a while. That's real. Um, but when I say adapt, I also didn't change myself. Right. I just adapted myself to the situations at hand. Um, and I don't. To, to be honest, I didn't really have, uh, uh, like I didn't have like a mentor or anybody to show me this how to adapt right it just kind of was off experience it was kind of off of uh watching the people around that i you know that i was able to have uh uh close enough eyesight because i i I, coming up under clue they were under the branch of the rockefeller camp and stuff too so i got to see a lot of i didn't see the real details but i got to see how people was moving so i took some of that with mixed it with what i do Mm-hmm. And I think that's really was my number one, you know, recipe to to just just what, being observant and being able to adapt. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, I, I can respect that. Life is a series of adjustments. Mm-hmm. You dig what I'm saying? From the time you're born to the time you die, you adjust and adjust and adjust and adjust and adjust. You stop adjusting, you start dying. Mm. Um, that's kind of what kept me here too. Mm-hmm. Just finding different ways to adjust. Luckily for me, I got like seventeen thousand parts of myself, so mm-hmm. whenever one of them isn't working, I just tap into to another, another one. <laughs> yeah. I mean, but you have, I mean, from fashion mm-hmm. to music, just to pop culturally relevant. Like you've maintained a certain level of seniority over the years, and. I ain't never seen nobody say, man, Fab getting old. Mm. I don't know how to fuck. Like, I, cause, you know, me, I got kids that are, you know, mm-hmm. I got a 23-year-old. I got a sophomore in college. You know what I'm saying? So it's easy for a motherfucker. And then they watch them grow up. Yeah. So it's easy for a motherfucker to look at me and say, man, Tip getting old as hell. Yeah. Nigga, I look younger than you. Right. But right. I've never heard that about Fab. <laughs> well, on the kids' side, I had kids late, so... 
my kids are still young. Right. I got an eleven year old and a four year old. And um on a on a on that I try to adapt too. Yeah. Mm. You know what I mean? I, I even fashion wise you gotta be able to see what's going on, but you also this gotta know what fits you. Like right. you can't be out here trying to be somebody else or look like somebody else. You That's just gotta real. see what's going on and say, All right, how can how can I adapt to that? Or how can I be myself mm. and what's going on right now. How can I fit into what's what, what's happening? Right. Without compromising. Without compromising yourself. That's yeah. it. That's you know, now you said you had children late and I, I I acknowledge that. However, you also have a stepdaughter. I do. That is older. I do. Um how is your stepdaughter? She is twenty one. Twenty one, okay. I have yeah. a twenty three year old. Mm. Uh most people on the outside looking in would call her my stepdaughter, but since I've had her since she was four years old um, I, I, she's my daughter. Yeah, and I had mine since she was six. So yeah. that's like, okay. So what? Did, and now your 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 stepdaughter, she is uh much like mine, mm-hmm. involved in, with a young man who is uh <laughs> in the same industry yeah. uh, of the same lifestyle as we are. How right. does that make you feel? And I'll share how I feel about it too. I mean, of course, I was watchful, but I tried not to be judgmental. Because I know how we are judged. You know what I'm saying? I know how from just walking in the room and you having the title of a rapper, you right. automatically the bad boy, uh, you doing wrong, you, 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 you infidelity. You have all of those. And not to say that those titles aren't come. They not, you know, every stereotype comes from experience. It, right. You yeah. know what I mean? They don't yeah. come out of nowhere. So I do understand it. But at the same time, I try to let me not judge them until I know them. Yeah, that makes and that's sense. what I wanted to do with him. You know, what that I'm saying? makes sense, man. That makes sense, man. I have a completely <laughs> got a different perspective. <laughs> I have a completely <laughs> different approach. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? With me, it's fuck this nigga till he show me otherwise. Mm-hmm. You dig what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And I must say, man, you know the young man that she's that she's dealing with. Uh, he was a, he's a cool cat. You know what I mean? He's a respectable young man. Mm-hmm. Uh, I even went so far as to check his background, man, where he's from and whatnot. And his pedigree seems to come back uh, with, without a tarnish. Uh, so I don't have anything negative to say about him. However, mm-hmm. I am uncomfortable of what may potentially transpire in the future. Mm-hmm. But that's not any. Now, that's my discomfort mm-hmm. exclusively. Mm-hmm. I don't share that discomfort with her mm-hmm. or him. I try not to let that. You know, my level of discomfort bleed over into their happiness. Right. I just remain quietly uncomfortable yeah. to myself. <laughs> Quiet uncomfortableness, though, is it's, it's a motherfucker, though, man. It's hard to be uncomfortable and stay quiet. Like You, you got, what I'm saying? You, you know why I don't like quiet uncomfortableness? Because even if you don't... Even if the top don't blow on that situation, it might blow somewhere else. Any time, any given moment, you know what I'm saying? But at the same time, I am rooting. I, I, I'll admit this. you rooting for They've it. lasted much longer than I expected. Yeah. So at this point, I'm rooting for them to go all the way. Man, fathers don't get, you know, we, I mean, mothers is mothers. You know. But fathers is fathers. Like a real father, like that can't be like. Uh, the, the, the thing is, right? Um, we cannot shy away from the reason why it is. Mm-hmm. The reason why it is is because mothers, grandmothers, and grandparents are in generally they have enough time to spend every waking moment with the child. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And that's really what. That's what shapes and molds that bond, the, the mind of the, the time. Mm-hmm. But we out here getting money. Right. You dig what I'm saying? Now, mind you, us out here getting money, once we get out here and get the money and we come back and we provide and we do what we need to do, and motherfuckers say, well, money ain't everything. It is if you don't have it. Right. So if we didn't right. have it, it would be everything. But now that right. we do have it, it isn't everything. It's another thing I have to get over. But I'm working I'm working on it in counseling. Yeah. Bear with me. Uh how is it that we are able to maintain the life that we do as artists within the hip hop community? Because I'm sure when you started your career, your family was much different. Yeah. So your expectations of yourself was much different. Mm-hmm. But as you grew as an artist, you grew as a family man. How did you make sure that both of those parts of you grew together? 
Um, I think it's uh, well for me it was really over time. I wasn't that good at it at first. I, I'll even admit, I, it it takes me balance. Me neither. And I wasn't good at the balance of I it. I sucked as a dad. You know what I'm saying? Early on, simply because, I mean, that shit is. Then that shit like basketball or riding a bike or doing anything else, man, the more you do it, the better you get. Right. You know what I mean? Uh, you also have to throw in the thing of us jumping into this world, this lifestyle. Sure. And and never having even experienced in that before. You know what I mean? Everybody right. going to take it on their they own way. That's why some people get in it and can't take it. Right. It's too much for them. Some people get in it and flourish. Some people get in it and fall in love with it. Some people right. hate it. Some sense. people want to back out of it and don't, you know what I mean? Because you don't know what you're getting into even as a person for yourself until you get in that lifestyle. So with family on the side of it, now you're dealing with that lifestyle and then you're dealing with family along with it. Family may not even like that lifestyle. They might not be able to take it. They might, you know, some family members don't want to be in the public eye. Some mm. family members love it. That's major. You know what I mean? In and Asia. That balance. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So some kids is going to be with it. Some really be like, man, I don't want to be on camera today. I mean, that has been a, 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 an amazing journey for me. Mm -hmm. It's been an amazing journey, and I think that I've learned so much on the journey that it has brought me and my children closer together. Mm -hmm. I was able to recognize, because if true enough, some children take to the spotlight a little bit different than others. Mm -hmm. But I must say, even the children that did not necessarily dive into the spotlight, I still learned things about them that I would have never known had it not been for the spotlight. For the spotlight. You know what I'm saying? Uh, that's what Family Hustle did for me. The metaphoric of it is the spotlight is putting light on certain things that you, know? you might have not even seen and that's right. That, you know what I'm saying? I mean, when you we very rarely get a chance to see our children when we're not when they don't know we're watching them. Mm -hmm. That's what Family Hustle did for me. Mm -hmm. I got to see Major be the big brother to his big brothers. Mm. Major was calling shots as a four year old. Mm -hmm. Nah, listen, I'm gonna do this. You gonna do that, and then we gonna meet up afterwards. Do you think people can really be the real, real, real them on television? If they know who they are. A lot of motherfuckers don't even know who they are. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They are just kind of being whatever they feel they have to conform to in order to fit into the box of success for television. Right. Motherfuckers don't know who they are. Motherfuckers don't know. Like, that. I think that is the best thing about me. The same nigga you see right here, same person you hear, I was that before I became T.I. Mm -hmm. I, before I was T.I., I was Lil' Bad Ad Tilt from Bankhead. Mm -hmm. That was my name. Lil' Bad Ad Tilt <laughs> from Bankhead. <laughs> like, no bullshit. That was my name. You know what I'm saying? So before I was T.I., I was that. Mm -hmm. So that kind of told me what my parameters were. Mm -hmm. It gave me the gauge to estimate whether this is something acceptable or rejectable, mm -hmm. whether this shit is for me or not for me. Like, me knowing who I was from being a little bad ass tilt from Bankhead allowed me to flourish as T.I. But why, why I ask you that, too, is not saying that you would have to change yourself for television, but who you are, what you say, what you do, you want to be authentic to that. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. So, like, how you just said how we started, where you might share some of your views or your opinions or even somebody could be judgmental of how you're treating your kids or how sure. you, what you say to them, the lessons you give them. Sure. You know what I'm saying? These are things that we would do and not. But on television, that's another sure. world. Hey, now, mind you, these people are the people who have never been there and will never be there whenever shit needs to get done on my children's behalf. Mm -hmm. So you mean to tell me you get to sit home in the comforts of your own dwelling and you get to just critique me mm -hmm. for free mm -hmm. behind your phone or your laptop or your desktop, whatever you have. What uh, if it's not them? What if it's like the Me Too movements or the... Again, you know? even still, mm -hmm. your opinion is free. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? When tuition must be paid, you are not there. Mm -hmm. Lights must be paid. 
child support must be paid, when things must be done, when I have to stop what I'm doing, mm-hmm. turn down money mm-hmm. in order to make it to a certain event that is important to my child. Where mm-hmm. are you? It's business as usual for you. Okay, so the only involvement and the only input you have is this isolated opinion on this isolated subject, which is like a drop in the ocean. Mm -hmm. This moment that you're having an opinion on, if my daughter's life was the ocean, this would be a drop. Mm -hmm. So how much consideration do you give a drop in the ocean? That's that's. That's true. I I mean, in a sense that remember the term "too real for too real for TV" or "too real for," you know what I mean? We yeah. all may know somebody who we be like, "Nah, that nigga can't do TV." Like, you know what, <laughs> what I'm saying? Like, there's certain people that I would be like, I wouldn't put them on real. Like my people from my hood or somebody in your family. See, that's even, the best that TV be like, though. I wouldn't put them. on That's the best right. TV though. That is. I mean, I get it. I mean, I, I understand, you know, maybe I'm not really meant for TV. That's why I never really, like, got into that TV side. Because I didn't man. know how much that you can really be yourself. Man, I'm going to be myself, man, because get what? Fuck that shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you dig what I'm saying? Fuck that shit. Fuck what they think. Fuck you, how you, you feel. Miss, you imagine Mr. Ruggs on the show, man? Absolutely. Oh. I can't wait for Ruggs to get on the show. <laughs> I'm inviting his, hey, man, as soon as he, as soon as he ready to introduce his family to the world, he can come on Family Hustle. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Whoa. Nah, he say nah, he say nah, he say nah, he say nah. Hey, hey man, Mr. Ruggs, man, is, is uh, uh, how could I say, uh, uh, is he a socialite? An entrepreneur. Right. Uh, He's a man of many A brand man, builder man many titles. A brand builder Who's made a name for himself in Brooklyn And his reputation has transferred uh, Itself to Atlanta And now he has uh, He's a restauranteur And with Copper Cove uh, I frequent the place Quite often uh, I love the Red Snapper if anybody goes to get the red, the red snapper, yeah, yeah, yeah. For and sure. if you recognize uh, any of you true restaurant aficionados, you will see that the sauce on the red snapper is the same sauce from my restaurant, Scales Nine Two Five, from from my chicken wings. You know what I'm saying, yo? yo but, you know what's so funny about restaurant, yo? I had a hey hey, I had a dinner at at Rugs Restaurant, right? Right. Chains came to the dinner. Yeah. He tasted the lamb chops. He said, yeah, they trying to do it like us. Mm. <laughs> like, so, like, when you in that field and that business, especially in the restaurant business, too, right. because food is your... That's real. No, nah, but I'm telling you, listen, no, 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 no. I'm not, I'm not speaking in generally. I'm talking about specifically. That's yeah. the same sauce. You got the same <laughs> chef. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You got right. the same chef as I had. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. but it's but but guess what? I've been missing those motherfucking wings mm. for so long because of that sauce. It's like an upscale braised wing sauce, mm. like from China Cafeteria. You know what I'm saying? It's not the same ingredients, but it's the same taste, give you the same feel. Mm. And since I closed my restaurant, I didn't know where to go get that taste from. Now mm. I know I can go to Copper Cove and get the motherfucking Red Snapper. Mm. You dig what I'm saying? Thanks to motherfucking Mr. Rugs. Yeah, man. Shout out to Mr. Rugs. Now, Shout hey, out Mr. Rugs, I want to ask you a little question, man, because I know that you are uh, closely officiate, uh, closely uh, officiate, uh, excuse me, I've been drinking, closely associated to um, my other brothers over uh, at Allure. And you guys having a little goddamn rub in down in Miami. Y'all going to get that worked out? Yeah, yeah, they figuring it out. Tell hey, me, you got to speak into the mic. Come on, come on, here and speak. I said, yeah, they figuring it out. Had to get a lawyer involved. Had to get a lawyer involved. All that comes from the hate that I was promoted. Uh, that hating shit. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. listen, yeah. will yeah. all, we'll all parties and plans go as expected? Yeah. They can't stop nothing. They can't stop nothing. It's done. It's done deal. Okay. Free free pub. That's all it was. Okay. Okay, cool. All right, cool. Now, another thing about you, Fab. Yeah. Another thing about you, Fab, that a lot of people might not know, much like myself, Mm -hmm. the same friends you had around you before you became fabulous are the same people you have around you now. Yes. Uh, Tell me what are the benefits to that. 
Um, one of the main benefits for me is that the people are they they genuinely they're genuine. You know what I'm saying? You know you know where they come from. You know yeah. some of them. You know they, most of them. You know their families. You yeah. know you know what I mean? It's 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 deeply rooted. I like friendships that are deeply rooted because, um, it comes from a place where where you could you could speak. It's like talking to somebody that that you really know versus talking to somebody where it's like, all right, I just met this person. I'm trying to show it right a, a, myself to them. Right. Whereas this person. Being deeply rooted, you could speak from. We could speak open. We could we could we could argue if we need to. Right. We could agree to disagree. We could we could go wherever it need to go. But you know, it's deeply rooted, and I I like that sense of friendship yeah. more than like new friendships where you can't really judge that that that's that type of situation. I feel like I don't even really have expectations for new friendships, man. Mm-hmm. Like when a motherfucker's a new friend, it's kind of like. You know what? How it goes, how it goes. You dig? Mm-hmm. I can't even really expect That's much of you. That's what I'm saying, you. right. And if you stay long enough to where you become a new friend to, you know what I mean, I've known you for five years or more or some shit like that, right. then I can begin to set the bar of expectations higher based right. on my experiences with you. Because at first it can be motives there. It's, yeah. You know, people want to be your friend for certain reasons. You know, it's it's... And then you in the, we in an industry where you know making new friends all the time ain't good for you because it's like it's like making a future enemy. That a hey, new friends are future enemies. All right. You gonna put that shit on a t shirt, fam. Mm-hmm. So you just got bars. You just bleed just, bars. Just, you just got that. You bleed and breathe bars. Yo. You know what I'm saying, man? What was the dopest verse you think you ever kicked? It's hard, man. I, I up up to certain points, I feel like. I felt like a certain verse was my best until that time, but then something. It really now to me is stuff that's more true to me. Yeah. I think when I first started rapping, I was just trying to be with the words and trying to make say something ill, that's and right. that was more. You know what I mean? It was more like how a poet is, like you trying to. But now it's like when I'm making music that connects directly to me in my life. Yeah. And I'm able to put that in words and make it rhyme at the end and make it sure. a, a good song. That's what that's what fills me more. So I heard you and Solange had a moment. We did. Yeah. Okay. We ain't gonna get into that too tough. We ain't gonna get into that. Moment, too tough. But nothing nothing nothing. You know what like it was? I, I love the lesson it taught me though. Okay, we can speak what, on what that. that? Because the lesson it taught me was me me being that word guy and always trying to say something that was cool or have some shock value to it i said uh, a line that said if you could have beyonce would you take solange so that was just a a comparison line to me but it would make sense in the comparison of the line but i mm. never thought about the two people or how it would affect a right. person and me saying like putting them the lesser or, you know what i mean so just to clarify when i saw beyonce she was like yo man we we fuck with you like you know like you we we all be around each other. We hang out and we you know I won't. They didn't get why I would you know th- and I didn't I didn't get that it was to be taken in that tone. So right. I told her from the conversation. I said I'm gonna apologize to Salon when I speak, when I see her. You right. know what I'm saying. So I ended up running into her and I was like, oh I just wanna you know apologize. I didn't mean it in any malice or any way, but I just didn't think. And she taught me the lesson of like yo you know as a rapper as somebody in your feel how how. Thanks, love. How how your voice and your platform is it, you can't you can't lessen it or thinking that it's so low that people are not influenced by what you say or uh, move forward off of what you say. So she 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 made me realize my something I should have already realized that that you know I'm I'm I gotta be mindful of what I'm saying. On the mic too, right? Not just coming up with shit and you know sure. thinking it don't affect people. So she said the tongue is mighty, and she said you know make sure that you 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 mean what you say when you say it. That you know makes sense. Even if you even if you do mean it, even if you do wanted to take a jab, and know that you're taking a jab, right? You know what I'm saying? Don't say it and be like, damn, I ain't even know I was taking a jab, but you're really taking a jab. I mean, that is a valuable lesson, and that's the lesson I learned from that point on. I said if I'm gonna say something. 
about somebody or put somebody's name in, yeah. in a rap or say, you know what I mean? I gotta take the consequence of me doing that. You yeah, know you gotta I mean? you gotta understand what the what the consequences are before you step into it. You gotta know the consequence versus the detriment. Mm-hmm. Um, it was a valuable lesson, and I tr- in turn said that with my son. Like you know what I'm saying? Because he might have said something sometimes. Like, like he play around. I'm like, yo, when you say somebody else's name in your, your yeah. mouth, know you putting somebody else's name in your mouth now. That's real. You know what I mean, that's real. I mean, how how do you kind of determine whether this is a good verse or whether you, you, you need to read it? Did you do it verse by verse or line by line? I do it verse by verse. I do it line by line. I've done that. Yeah. But when when I'm doing line by line, Sometimes it's more like the vibe of the song to me. Mm. When I'm doing verse by verse, I'm more um, more about the words. Yeah, I you can know what I mean. It. It's it's your words are, are mighty too. You, you know, the tongue is mighty, but what certainly, you're saying certainly the words is is it started becoming deeper for me. You know I mean, I I uh I kind of you know I go in there and do some shit. And when I look around the room and I see everybody like, yeah, 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 the first thing I think is, nah, they don't know. Mm. Let me think. Let me see. I got to find something to fix. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I go through that motherfucker I'm like, right there. That's the line. Mm-hmm. That could be better. Mm-hmm. And I go through that motherfucker and like kind of, you know what I'm saying, dissect it, if you will, mm-hmm. and hope for, you know, the best possible outcome. Tell me a time that, you ever work with a producer that kind of just made you just just kept like nah that ain't good enough that ain't good enough to pull the best out of you? Just Blaze, cause sometimes you know he makes he makes amazing beats. So yeah, even when I came about doing a verse, if I listen back and I still feel like I could have said something a little bit better, a little slicker, a little sharper, mm. you know, even if I go work on it separately, right, I can acknowledge that. Right, and it took me a little bit of time to really get to that point. Right, um, because I, then I started knowing myself. I think rappers too, you you find your your niche too. You know what I'm saying? I think at first, you know, you you develop a style, you develop how you like to rap. Sure. But then a couple years into it, it's like then you, you become know you. Your, yeah, you become you. You know what I'm saying? And I've seen that even with some of the younger artists or the artists under our generation. Yeah, a lot of these niggas were trash at first. Yeah, a lot of these niggas were trash at first, and we were patient. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying, and then, and then when the money came, then, you know, their confidence grew. They 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 had more experiences. You can they, even, they, see, even see some artists when they found themselves, and you'd be like, "Absolutely, that's you what, what you mean? meant." Got you. I mean, and um, like how how do you determine what's good and what sucks now? It's hard. That's I'm, I'm having saying. a hard time with that because yeah, I be too. feeling like my ears are old because yeah because as soon as I say something suck they blow up yeah so I say man that shit suck man get that shit out of here blow up boom all the things that you think need more time I've seen something I think like it had potential I'm like yo I like his energy I like his but I think you know this era is no artist development it's like if if I made a song in my living room last night you gonna hear it I'm ready to yeah you gonna hear this I'm ready to sound cloud right now load you know what me saying? up. That's the thing, man. Do you think that it's better or worse now without any gatekeepers? That's an interesting question, man. Better or worse? I think it's I think it's better in the sense of the freedom mm. for people to explore right. find themselves. Not, right. You know, because without the freedom, that's what kept people in a box sometimes. Oh, I could never do that. Uh, if I ain't... If, if, you know what I mean? It now you seeing everybody this person can do it. it? Yeah. I'm gonna give it a shot. Yeah. You know what I mean? You don't even know if you're good at it till you give it a shot. That's you true. might give it a shot and be like, nah, I'm really good at this shit. There's some people that say, nah, I can't rap for shit. <laughs> I can't do this shit. You we know what I'm saying? More, we need more of those. Those that that's the hero we need. No, the confidence of people now too is high as shit. Cause if they see somebody that they believe ain't even that ill and they are uh, successful. 
then their confidence is like, that's I can horrible. do that too. That's horrible. That is horrible. <laughs> that does. That's horrible for the craft, but I that's think, what I'm that's why I said the freedom is, so is great horrible. for people. Yeah. I love people being able to make the <laughs> manifest what they want to do and try to do it. Man. But the actual craft, that's where it gets can saturated imagine, and you lose. Can you imagine seeing such a horrible barber? Mm. Motherfucker done fucked up so many heads that make you feel like you could do it too. Mm-hmm. I think barbers used to do that back in the day. I bro. mean, but how good of a barber? I was I, a horrible I, barber. Yeah, I, I was I, a horrible barber. I got a fucked up cut trying to be cheap sometimes, like going to your man who's just... Man, listen... I had my, my, my cousin Toot, God rest his soul. That's who introduced me to DJ Toomp. Mm-hmm. Um, and actually kind of like, in, like you know, inadvertently got me into the rap game. But he he owned a, a, a string of beauty and barbershops. Mm-hmm. It was a barbershop he had. And, you know, we used to hang out here at night and shit. He was like, man, you mad well come work. Like, come work. I don't cut no hair. He's like, I'll show you. Like, all right, cool. So I go. You know what I'm saying? He go through the tutorial or whatever and showing me. Now, meanwhile, the reason I wanted to be in the barber shop was I had pounds of weed to sell. Mm -hmm. So I figured. like a good shop for me. I figured I set up shop here, cut some hair. I don't care how many many hairs I cut. As long as my clientele can come to this place this you know how this you know how this story not to interrupt you <laughs> well, at a time when i was selling weed i i had the weed selling out of a barber shop that's hey, why this shit is it really it's, because because what? it's like such a shop that it's everybody community. Comes, first of all niggas is coming to get a haircut every time all the time it's such a one stop shop for it that it don't even anything you need to sell to black people <laughs> put it in a barber shop <laughs> i don't give a fuck <laughs> what it is yeah, that's yeah. what it used to be. Yeah. Bootlegs, DVDs, bootleg DVDs, t-shirts. CDs, right. T-shirts, motherfucking black and miles, blunts, whatever the fuck you got. Bring it to the barber shop. You're going to sell it better than if you got damn standing on an empty corner. Mm-hmm. So, I'm in the barber shop, fucking up little kids' heads left and right. Mm-hmm. I sold a bunch of weed, though. Mm-hmm. That's also the same place that DJ Toomp introduced me to Jason Jeter, mm. who became my manager and my partner in business. Um, so as we do, uh, uh, you know, as we do every, like what we how we do every day, we we'll cut, 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 and then uh, 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 by the end of the day, we shutting down, sit down, get us a twelve pack of Coronas, pop up uh, uh, some Coronas, sit back, watch ESPN, drinking beer, talking shit. Uh, DJ Toon walks in with Jason Jeter. Mm-hmm. And so they're talking and talking, and they're talking about a rapper. You know what I mean? DJ Toon is like, yeah, man, I told Jason about this rapper. I told Jason about the rapper you had, man, about Tip. Da, 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 da. And so they're talking, and, and they're talking about me in third person. And I'm right here sitting in in the, in the barber chair. And Jason's like, yeah, man, so when we see him, and da 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 da, da he's like, yo, listen, but where is he? Where's this rapper? Where's the guy I heard? And I'm just sitting there, I'm looking. And then got and my cousin say, That nigga right there next to you. Mm. He say, Nigga, it's you. I say, Yeah, nigga, it's me. <laughs> mm. And that is the moment when we got down, kind of put my career together. Me, Jason, DJ Toon, my cousin Toot, put all our paper together, got studio time, man, did my little demo tape that later on, man, got me a record deal at LaFay. Did that you see? Shit. Did you see Jason would be the business man and partner that he is to you today? Hmm. And you look I, back I, at I, it I, even from now. Would you? Could you? See, could you see that, or you think that was his growth too, bro? I mean, I definitely can't take anything away from Jason's uh, his evolution. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I will be completely honest and totally candid when I say. I had no expectations of him. Mm-hmm. I had no, I had no, I didn't know mm-hmm. what the fuck a manager did. Mm-hmm. I didn't know what a fucking good executive from a bad executive was. I had no fucking idea. I knew I was selling dope. Mm-hmm. I'm selling dope weed right now because I called myself goddamn calming down. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You know, when a nigga, a nigga who, a trap nigga who's selling crack every day, 
they idea of calming down and 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 goddamn doing right is selling weed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's, that's the truth. You know what I'm saying? That's the nigga, truth. Nigga, I went from <laughs> nigga, I, I went from selling motherfucking ounces of hard. You nigga, feel like it's less risk, and everything, like. And now it's like all I, I nigga, all I sell is weed, nigga. You know what I'm saying? So I was at that phase in my life. So I really just wanted. I really just wanted to see something different. Mm. I just wanted to see something different. I wanted to experience something different. I wanted to move myself forward. I just wanted to go from this. I felt like, nigga, I've mastered this this part of life. I ain't going to lie either. I would have never saw Ruggs be able to man he is today either. Shit. Hey, but man. it's his growth and his evolution that got him in his. You I know what I do it. see. He always been a person that could be himself around people and people like that. That's like C-Rod. My brother C Rod, he liked that. Yeah. C Rod, man, you know, we always got into it. We got the beef and got them fucking around, shooting it out with motherfuckers for different reasons here and there. C Rod ain't never had no problem with nobody. Mm-hmm. Ain't nobody never not like C Rod. Well, I can't if say a nigga don't like C Rod. Like rugs, I can't say nobody ain't never like rugs, or he ain't get into it with nobody. I can't. Hey, uh-uh. man. If a nigga didn't like C Rod, then we know that nigga they really know, did something. Yeah, you did hate. something. You, you, nigga, no, nah, you got it coming to you, bro. Mm-hmm. Um, but regardless of all that shit, bro, all the things that we went through, mm-hmm. all the lessons that came from losses, all of our, our, our triumphs, our tragedies, man, that shit made us into the men that we are so we could lead the next generation. Definitely. And it's, 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 it's guys like you that lead by example because you show that you can still maintain uh, the the – solidarity within your music you ain't got to switch up and change over because a lot of you motherfuckers from New York y'all got into the yeah nah 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 nah. don't you stop me don't you stop me don't you motherfucking stop me now I'ma say it I'm gonna say this shit I got to say it expeditiously nah expeditiously nah Nah. (laughs) shit is true hey how about this how about this how about this? You when I start lying, you then stop me. How about that? Start. You gotta stop. When I start lying, you stop me. It's dangerous. Yeah. A lot of you niggas from New York. Oh, mm-hmm. You niggas from New York. That's it right there. Right. You fucked yeah, up right there. Yeah, yeah. I said it. I said it. Because I remember how y'all dealt with me when I came up there oh, for the summer. Man, you gotta I remember how y'all dealt with me. Uh-huh. Some yeah. nigga, yeah, I said it. You got a New York I, chip on his shoulder. <laughs> Hey, a lot of you niggas from New York, though, when the South start, like, getting hot, mm-hmm. motherfuckers switch their styles up. I think I think, but you didn't. did. I think a lot of guys did. I even... But you didn't. I want to say, not switch, but I feel like I adapted in some ways, yeah, too. Yeah, that's the key word right there. I never really... I never, I never really, heard Fab trying to sound like a South nigga. I, no, not, not, that's, that's switching up. That's what Adapting I mean. Adapting is... Or or when Working. drill music, when drill music, the Chicago shit came out. Yeah, I heard a lot of but that was switching up to see, that shit. You know what that was too? That was a transition of a genre of music. The whole young that's a young nigga music. Yeah, it's really a young nigga music though. Say what? He said that the drill music that they're doing now is not so much like Chicago. It's more like UK, UK. Huh? I feel like it's a mixture. Yeah. Well. I'm just saying, I respect those of you from New York Mm -hmm. that was able to manage, maintain, and sustain. New York changed too, though. Don't let you think. It ain't the same as when you first came to New York. Hmm. It's It's gentrified. So if the city could change, (laughs) the the artists and the people are going to change too. Excellent point. Yeah. Excellent point. There's a lot of different things going on up there that it ain't. It ain't selling it's crack, New York. You can't. Okay. I'm not telling you to stay in there and be like. It can't be like 99, New York. It's not 99. It's 2019. 20, 20, yeah, yeah okay. it's not, you know what I'm saying. Well, I mean, it's, what? It's some yeah. niggas that never left New York. Still, yeah. nigga. They're stuck That's in that time in New stuck, York. Yeah, they yeah, stuck they in like 99, New York. You know what I mean? There's yeah. niggas stuck nah, in 99, New York. Yeah. Nobody back. wants to stand on the corner anymore. Nobody that was a 99 thing to do. Uh, now is, there's no reason for you to be standing on it. Yeah, you can't. You can't do the same things you were doing in 99. So even with me, like, 
I didn't switch up, but my adapting was embracing mm. Southern music and Southern artists. That's right. Um, I was one of the first ones from New York to do a song with Jeezy. Dope. My my relationship with Jeezy came from Blue and BMF. Right, right. And you know they used to campaign his music a lot, and you know Jeezy was bubbling and doing that stuff, doing his thing in the South mm-hmm. and in Atlanta. And um, when I was doing my project at the time, I think this was about '04, and I was like, "Yo, I want to put Jeezy on something." One because I knew he had. He had something different that didn't sound, even didn't sound like you, didn't sound like That's real. Outcast. It didn't That's it real. didn't sound like nothing. It just sounded that shit different. Was different. You know that what I'm saying? Different. And it was slow. You know, even then Jeezy rapped slower. That's like it was a different whole, Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? It was just a different vibe. And his beat so. selection always his been beat selection was exceptional. Amazing. You know it was like mean? them shit catered to his flow. It's like they made that shit with him in the room. It's that, it, that's yeah. exactly how it sounded. I went from old school Chevy's. Drop top court like it looked Amen. like the shit was and it was and it fit the lifestyle too. You did so running around in that in the lifestyle, the music was going with the lifestyle. So like when I did this joint, I'm like, yo, I want to put Jeezy on something. Now people didn't know who it was. Right. Even in New York, his style was a little different from them. They're like, yo, who the who the country do you put on the joint? You know what I'm saying? Uh, I'm like, man, but after a while, then they caught on to it and I could see it. Man, I got into so much shit about the word country. When people use the word country, you know what I'm saying? New York. Man, I got into fights when I was a little kid mm-hmm. about motherfuckers calling me country, talking about talk, talking about sounding country and shit. Like, man, well, come on, man. Let's go ahead and let's lock in. And, and, and even fast forward to present day, I got into one of the most knockdown, drag out discussions mm. with Beyonce mm-hmm. and Nicki Minaj. Mm. Because they said I sounded country. Mm. And I corrected them respectfully and said, hey, listen, country is a derogatory term when you're dealing with someone from the South. The term you're looking for is Southern. Mm. And then I believe Queen B may have said something like, well, my grandmama stay in such and such and such Texas, and she's proud to be country. And I say, mm. well, that's fine for, for, that's fine for her. Uh, however, for me, why you take it as the derogatory? Well, because man, country is slow. You know what I'm saying? Country is like do- the last country to don't catch mean on. Slow at all? Is that what I'm trying to tell you? Yeah. Listen, the term- that's how you think when somebody nah. call them country. Oh, you try to call me slow? Nah, 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 but check it out though. That's how you think. But check it out though. That's what it is. The term. I didn't think slow. The term you're looking I for, it was for southern, like yeah. you said. The term you're looking for is southern. It is southern is well, the country term you're is another for. word for southern. No, it is not. Yeah. Yes, it is. Yes, no, it is not. Yes, it is. Atlanta, I'm taking hey, listen, side. <laughs> Atlanta, Atlanta is southern. Atlanta is southern. Atlanta is southern. Okay, Valdosta is country. I don't even know what Valdosta is. That's what I'm trying to tell. Yeah, that's crazy. Right? That's Atlanta, what I'm trying to tell Atlanta, you. Atlanta, Atlanta. Huh? I'm a city nigga. I'm a city nigga. I grew up in motherfucking projects, apartments, and goddamn, like the concrete jungle. A different concrete jungle, all the same, but right. a concrete jungle just like everybody. It so wasn't country, no motherfucking you cows. It's, more rural and, and no and it's rural. But country don't, country don't mean that either, though. Country's disconnected from the city where all the action is taking place. <laughs> Country, country country is disconnected from there is no nigga in the capital in the city. Let, let's Google and, the actual definition of country. I tell you what, y'all do that, I'll be right back. Yeah. Y'all do that. Google it. Google it. Uh, yeah, nah, nah, nah. The second one says districts and small settlements outside large town cities or the capital. <laughs> right. So, country. That's one's kinda in what you're saying. Absolutely. Kinda the far. city you feel shouldn't be associated as a country. But what you It says capitals. Right. I am from Atlanta, which is the capital of Georgia. Atlanta is the capital of Georgia? Yeah. yeah with that. Yeah, no, Georgia with that. as a whole. All right. So, so I ain't That's from, terrible. I'm from Atlanta. <laughs> Right. I'm from Atlanta. See, see, nah, y'all see? See, nah, nah. Fuck no. I'd be damned. Let me tell you something. To me, a lot of the country, a lot of the whole United States is country. It's more country than city. There are city in each. But it's. Put me in the minority then. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Huh? 
What about Yankee? That definitely comes out. Yeah, get your New Yorkers out of here. <laughs> Yankee is something that's indicative. Nah, 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 nah. Yankee is something that's indicative of a New Yorker. That's something that's, that's something that's indicative of a New Yorker. There's certain words that people in the South use uh -huh. that people up top don't use too. So that's like this is true. So that's what also becomes true. like part of the country. Like let let's say like let's show, say people in the South may their derogatory term of white people is cracker. People up top don't say cracker. Uh, so well, it's certain it, terms it, that it, are guess used what? in the South. People that, up top don't say cracker because motherfuckers up top don't say nigga as much neither. Yeah, that's it. White yeah. people don't say nigga as much as they do in the South? Huh? They probably, yeah. It's, they, they're nah. more over. It's a, it's, it's, nah. I, I would believe so, but I think they White might people say in New doors, York do not know. say nigga as much nah, as they do they in the South. Yeah, I, was, yeah, I, I, I mean, I was, racism I was, I was, exists everywhere. everywhere. Yeah, but, yeah, but I, yeah, I, but, I yeah, huh? The South well, still got that on them, though. Man, that shit, man. Ain't shake it off. But yes, take, but, ain't shake it off. What you mean we, we ain't shook it off? No, I'm saying. Fuck you mean? Y'all <laughs> still feel like this crack is... Yeah, this nah, power, man, what you not, mean? This, we ain't shook it off, <laughs> nigga. We in the thick of it. <laughs> what you talking about? Shaking it off, nigga. Yeah, Georgia's definitely racist. Atlanta be, Atlanta, be, Atlanta be blinding people to how racist Georgia this is can true. be sometimes. Because Atlanta, you feel like you in the... You think this you amongst true. your people and it's black this and it's true. Yeah, yeah, you drive a little further in. And... Hey, yeah. listen, I'm going to tell you something. You have a, there's a saying, and, and, and it goes as such. You have Atlanta, and then you have Georgia. Mm -hmm. So Atlanta is going to be, you know, the epitome of success for black people. It's going to be... Uh, Resembling Wakanda, mm -hmm. if you will, because, man, when you come to Atlanta, man, we a two-phone call town, bro. Mm -hmm. I don't give a fuck what you need. Mm -hmm. It could be it could be tickets to the Falcon game. It could be a bag of weed. Uh, a, a, a big bag of weed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or it could be... A liquor license, goddamn. You dig what I'm saying? <laughs> this shit gonna happen like this. You gonna call somebody. They gonna say, hello? You gonna say, yeah, man, what's up, man? You got X, Y, and Z? No, man, shit, I ain't got it, but... I know, I know my guy, man. Hold up right quick. Hold on, hold on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, look, man, what's going on? You still got such and such and such and da 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 Can you still do such and such and such, blase, blase? For real? Well, my man on the other line, man, you know what I'm saying? You don't really know him, but I know him. He good, man. Trust me, he's great. Look, I need you to look out for him like you would look out for me. You know what I'm saying? Hold on, I'm going to click him in. Bow. And that's how that shit happens. The swindle began. Nah, <laughs> nigga. <laughs> nah, nigga. Hey, look. That's the way shit happened in Atlanta. And it don't matter what the fuck it is. That's what makes Atlanta great. Yeah. That's what makes Atlanta great. I see motherfuckers having issues in other cities about all kinds of trivial, minute bullshit like fucking... Let's say permits to shoot videos and shit like that. Yeah. New York, man, is, New York what? is really no, different on that. Time. Man, hey, man. Hey, listen, man. Man, yeah. hey, these police up here, man, trying to stop my video, man. Y'all call. Hey, what's up? Who? And then, you know, then the police be like, oh, I man, like I'm sorry. I about the South, though. Yeah, I love Atlanta. It ain't, whoa. It. it ain't the South. Atlanta. Yeah, it's definitely Atlanta. Atlanta is like this. Like that I can't really speak on that, but Atlanta, I know for a fact, is like that. And we've opened our, we we've opened the doors and the arms of our cities to allow each and every other city to come in. And a lot of you motherfuckers is running from your realities of where you're from. What, what does that mean? Right? Well, you know exactly what the fuck it means. No, no, you know exactly what when a nigga burn out his reputation where he from. The mo most motherfuckers move to Atlanta. And bitches too. And bitches too. That's on them right there. You know it works now. That's true. I would meet niggas in Atlanta. You just meet somebody. Right. We get like I meet you today. You introduce me. Here's my people. Right. Two days later, yo, nigga, you was a rat. 
You dig what or I'm saying? Or they come down there and pull finesses down yeah, there because they can't finesse absolutely. up there anymore. Absolutely. Hey, <laughs> but guess what, though? No. You know when you really know you're dealing with that? When you meet a motherfucker, right? And just like you said, you treat him like shit, man. You know, I met him. He cool, blase, blase. He from wherever. And then you at a spot with him. Usually it's Magic City. You know what I'm saying? Now after this, it probably be Copper Cove. But either way, you know what I'm saying? You meet a motherfucker and you with him at a spot. You know what I'm saying? Y'all talking shit. And, and, and then the motherfucker pull up on him. Nigga, fuck you doing here? Whoa. And you see a nigga, oh, oh true let, colors, let me get out of this. <laughs> let me see how this play out. That's that new nigga, friends, what the fuck you doing here, nigga? No friends, nigga, you know what you did? Nigga, you know what you did? Nigga? <laughs> what you got in your pocket? Yeah, you dig what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, get that shit up, nigga. What you got on you, bro? What you got on you, bro? Hey, look. Hey, you didn't turn, turn to you. Into friend into hey, look. God. Hey, look. Hey, look. Yo, you with this nigga? Then they turn to you and say... This nigga with you? Yeah. No, he with man, you. Hell nah, nah man. I just met this nigga, bro. I just met this nigga, bro. What do he do? What do he do? That's that new friends, future enemy shit right there. Hey man, like that's that's some Atlanta shit. You know what I'm saying? You like you 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 only experience that kind of shit. Yeah. What about the pimping that's going on? Now? What pimping? Nah, that shit called trafficking. Oh, that shit yeah, called human trafficking. I suggest you stay you away from era. that it's shit. Now, what man. you can do is manage your girl's OnlyFans site. Bro. That's what you can do. You cannot pimp physically. There is no real life physical day to day pimping. That's the new name for a pimp, a manager. That is right there. A manager. Oh. Yeah, man. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I'm just saying, like, uh, do you know how much fans only, only makes? Yeah. Do anybody know how much fans only makes? Anybody? Anybody? Who's anybody? Owner? Anybody? Huh? I seen the statement. Chick showed me like 180 grand or something. Fans only. When they're like, this was like Residually. a three month span. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. In a quarter. In a quarter of a year. I she made 180 grand. It can run it up if you if you get popular enough. It can run yeah, it up because it's, it's open to me. worldwide. Somebody in Czechoslovakia yeah. can. Watch this shit. So it ain't even just like a, you know what I mean? It's personal and you get to think about certain videos. Man, listen. I'm like, damn, how you? This shit is explaining like, (laughs) after a certain amount of time, she see your name on y'all cool now, like on her fans only. You dig what I'm saying? But now you get personal because she go see you and they. Fuck on picture. Y'all, so y'all with the fans only? Are we with? Yeah, you with I like never. Yeah. Yeah. You with? I, but I respect. You, you with only? Like, you, you, I mean, you, 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 are you open to girls to doing that? You think that's a cool thing for them to do? Oh no, nah, I ain't saying oh. if it's a cool thing for them to do. I, I think it is cool for them to do. Huh? I think it's a cool thing for them to do. I think it's great for them to do. I think it's a great. Yeah, they're not selling no pussy. They would be out here yeah, like walking the party. walking the track, yeah, standing on the corner. You know what I'm saying? Never Putting themselves in harm's they way. The now they're in their own, the comfort of their own home, in front of a camera. You know what I'm saying? That's Fucking a cucumber. Yeah. You know? Man. You don't want to. You don't want to come across your do. daughter on nobody, no. on no fans, man. No fans only. They see a family member. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, don't you want to see it? No you ain't got no business on OnlyFans anyway. Yeah. I had never go on there. Ain't no way in the man. Come on, man. Ever, ever, ever. Ain't no way in the head. Instagram is the thought catalog, is it not? Instagram is turned into the thought catalog. Insta- Instagram is the gift and the curse, man. It is. Everything is a gift and a curse. You know what I'm saying? If you think about it, water is a gift and a curse. You needed to live too much of it to drown you. What the fuck? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I think uh, every <laughs> everything is a gift and a curse. Uh, it, nigga, air needed to breathe too much to suffocate you. Mm-hmm. Everything, man. Too much of anything is good for nothing. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean. So moderation is the key to life. That's Balance. how I see it. And that's the Balance thing I don't word. have. That's the one thing I don't have, man. You know what I'm saying? Like subtlety seems to escape me. I just can't. Whatever I do, I do to death. To death. I do that shit to death. I'm either off or I'm on, man. You either mm-hmm. gonna be got them smiling, laughing, slapping hands, and chilling, or we gonna be motherfucking fighting and shooting. Mm-hmm. I don't know no in between for real. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think that's. I think that's, that's something for you to learn. That's do you the think, gift. Or, do, or, or you gonna ride it out with being 
again, the gift and the curse. I mean, I think I get better every year. I think mm-hmm. every year I get better. I probably ain't getting better for, I ain't getting better enough as fast as I could be or should be getting better for the people that surround me. Mm-hmm. Uh, but if I'm thinking about myself, I think I'm doing good. Yeah, I, I think, think I'm doing good. I think, I think if you continuously growing, I think you're doing, you're going in the right direction anyway. I think as, as people, we are, we should be allowed to make mistakes. Sure. And, and learn from them. Mm. If you never made a mistake, you wouldn't even learn anything. You know what I'm saying? You That's learn right. how to do something right from doing it wrong. That's real. You know what I'm saying? Especially if it wasn't taught to you. And even sometimes when it's taught to you, you know, it's like, it's like, what they say where your parents will will could tell you everything to do, but they also just watching what you do. Yeah. So they're going to they gonna do as you do more than as you say. That's you know real. what I'm saying? So I, I think, like, you got to go through things, and you got to have mistakes in your life for you to um, be able to make the right moves. You know what I'm saying? Or okay. sometimes you can see other people's mistakes. Seeing other people make a mistake help you. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, damn, That's I don't want to be in that position. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, That's yeah, That was crazy. Yeah. Even when people die, you know, uh, God bless and rest in peace to Kobe Bryant and condolences Man. to his family and Absolutely. everybody who's in that tragic moment. But as people die, we also, at the moment, always say, damn, we got to live life, man, because nobody saw that coming. Mm-hmm. And you can never see your, your, your death coming. But, man, let me tell y'all something, bro. Let me tell y'all something, some real shit, bro. Nigga, me and my old lady were beefing. Mm-hmm. We were beefing, man. We were having our moment, you know what I'm saying? And we even were... beefing. I'm just telling you. I got no, you. but I got even you. beefing. Relationships got to have a little beef, I think, too, once I in a while. It. But listen, but, but hear me out. Now, this is some shit that I got them ran myself in a circle over. Mm-hmm. So me and my old lady were beefing, you know what I'm saying? We had we was having one of our moments. Uh, the first of the year, mm-hmm. might I add, mm-hmm. you know. Start the year off on the beef. You dig what I'm saying? Nah, well, you know what I'm saying? It's a little later in January. It's a little mm-hmm. later in January. But mm-hmm. we, we, we still done, top of the hey, top, really. We done brought the year in yeah. on some bullshit <laughs> before. Yeah, yeah. We done brought the year in on some bullshit yeah, before. Likewise. <laughs> I'm talking about, shh, huh. Yeah. Anyway, but now, so here we are into the latter part of January. And we beefing, and, and we having, you know, we going back and forth on an argument, and I'm arguing with her about whether or not she's going to make a flight to L.A. Arguing back and forth, and she arguing with me about whether or not she should ain't, she should even bother coming. Mm-hmm. And I, and then we, we had one of those, you know, well, I ain't standing that shit. Dude, you, fuck you, fuck you too. Boom, hung up. Then I... Another motherfucker said, hey, you heard Kobe died? I said, hell no, nah, man, quit bullshitting, bro. And then the shit got down, just started coming in and becoming more and more and more real. Mm-hmm. And I called her back. I said, hey, you heard such and such and such? And she was like, hell no, nah, man, get off my phone playing. Like she, You know what I'm saying? She's like, nigga, you just trying to get down. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You trying to get in, nigga. Get out, man. Come on, mm-hmm. man. I was like, nah, nigga, for real. So then, you know what I'm saying, when she called back, I was like, hey, man, you need to get out of here. Mm-hmm. For real. This shit ain't, this shit, this shit, this shit, this shit serious. Mm-hmm. We all must motherfucking take time to to notice when the universe is sending us signs for shit. Mm-hmm. You need to get your ass out of here. It's also, it, it show you that, that, that time can't be. And that's what I'm saying. Yeah. My nigga, if I was to, if, man, you can't replace time. But look, though, do what I say. I say, listen, man, while we were arguing, Kobe was going through his lab. He was spending his lab moments on earth. We were here sitting back arguing back and forth about some trivial bullshit, some shit that didn't even matter. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Just look at how important his moment was and how unimportant our moment was and you still like we can't just we gotta learn you gotta from learn this. from that you, you dig what I'm saying and uh you know she thought for about, about I say about 10 seconds she's like nigga get the fuck out of here you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying she gave me maybe 10 15 seconds and then she's like nigga get the fuck out of here nigga but I really do feel like what if everything that everyone does contributes to the outcome of another person's circumstances. Mm -hmm. You dig what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, whatever we're doing right now, 
okay? Whatever we're doing right now, this moment we're sharing right here, what if in China someone is affected by a move that we make right here, right now? It definitely happens like that. You dig what I'm saying? It definitely happens like that. This conversation, (laughs) the conversation we have sparks... But you know, I always this see this energy. clip. I always see this clip of Tupac saying, "I may not change the world, but I'm gonna spark the uh, minds." That could, you know what I'm saying? So that's that's what it does right there. The conversation alone can spark people. Right. And you 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 putting a spark into people. Who knows how many people? That shit to me, man. That shit is uh, even it, in it, death. Kobe's death is gonna put sparks in people. He wouldn't have told you right? Shit is prolific. Yeah. He's done a lot of yeah. his life. It's not all about working, working all day. You can reach that goal. He accomplished everything he wanted to accomplish. When his time hit, then really. You gotta get on the mic, Rugs. Huh? You gotta get on the mic, Rugs. You gotta get a mic, Rugs. Rugs over here, the voice in the corner, man. Come on, man. Let the people hear what you're saying. You, you dropping knowledge. Just like we go through life wanting the finer things in life, right? Working hard for right. anything. But you miss out on the moments of family time. Right? That's, That's that real. Balance That's, real. Balance. That's real. Balance is the key to the shit. As much of a family man as people see me as, and I appreciate that, I've missed so much shit. Mm-hmm. Partially because of prison. Mm-hmm. The other part because... You want the bag. Exactly. I gotta have a bag. Everybody, that's all I meant. You yeah, want the bag. Gotta move with the money at the speed of opportunity. Let me let me tell you some you shit dig? about me. Uh huh. With me missing family shit, I never miss like real shit. Graduations, birthdays. Nah, so, nah, I never nah, miss nah. that, but I miss the little shit. Yeah, that's like the shit. Like your son when he first start walking, that's or like the little yeah. shits like that. I don't miss those are key shits in family life too. That. You know what I'm saying? Like, those is little shit. But we'll miss them because we out there chasing the bag or we got to handle business or even sometimes just in the lifestyle. You got to – I always talked about, you know, even when I first came in, baby, at the same time when you was coming in, uh, family life wasn't at the forefront of your career or who you was as an artist. You know what I mean? You You was even supposed to be projected as a single man. That's right. For I the remember, public. I remember, I remember when Atlantic didn't really want people to know that I had, like, you know, a girl. They were trying to of keep course. me from I didn't sharing. know DMX was married or Ja Rule oh, was yeah. married yeah. or yeah. fucking, you know what I mean? You never yeah. knew them shits until this era. Like, like the thing about family. <laughs> he was married for 10 years or had a girl from the high school. And yeah. that, that, wasn't the, that wasn't the thing then. DMX used to be outside your high school? I was picking up his son. I went to Rice. <laughs> but I also nah. feel I was wrong because what? we were, we were also those those key figures. If we'd have seen them having family, we would have known that that was cool. That's 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 cool to have. A, However, we yeah, did, right. but 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 right. but for business is not for business. We did see Reverend Run. You understand me? We saw him. Yeah, that, but that's like seeing. That's different though. I'm not to even say that Red Run ain't cool. We I'm saw just saying Ice like, yeah, and his old lady. yeah, but them ain't our gen- them ain't our guys that we looking at. That that's your guys. It, but but we saw it. But we saw it. No, but I'm saying you're not looking at them like the guys that you look up to, and you t- and them showing you that family and love is important. This is true. We we they they were told to hide it as well, or didn't know how to show it too. Because sometimes we don't know how to show it because we never seen hey, it listen, too within our house. I remember I remember niggas looking at me like I had three heads when I used to show up everywhere with my old lady. Like back, you know what I'm saying? Back mm-hmm. in 2003, 2004, I used to show up everywhere with my old lady. Niggas like, man, why you got your girl here? I'm like, nigga, why you ain't got yours? Mm-hmm. And that that was kind of like a lot of motherfuckers. Kind of like they didn't receive that. The way they would right now, so I understand what you're saying. I just think it's a part of the evolution. Somebody has to mm-hmm. be the first. Somebody has to kick the door down and say, "Man, look, this is the way I'm going to do it." And I don't give a fuck whether or not you guys accept it or not. I'm going to do it this way because this is what's best for me. Um, like it used to be secret relationships. You dig what I'm saying? Like, niggas, this niggas be whole broke whole up before you knew they were together. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? That shit was crazy. Uh, Mm-hmm. You, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. 
But you can't do it now. The social shit is over. You can't. You can't even. How do you feel about that? How do you feel about that? Because you actually. Well, we have been in the game like before social media to right now. Like, what do you feel about the game now? With, I guess, cameras being everywhere. Mm -hmm. Motherfuckers kind of being all in your business more than necessary versus back then all you had to do was have a hit record. Right. I think it's, I think the key word of this whole shit is adaption. You know what I'm saying? Mm. I see that's what's going on. And it's not just even, it's not even just social media. Like you just said, there's cameras on every corner. Yeah. There's cameras at the street light. There's cameras at the toll booth. Like everything is, is more focal on seeing everything now. So, it's leaving less to hide because it's more it's more it's more spotlight on everything. It's more cameras on everything. It's more people who are interested in that. You know what I'm saying? Before people weren't even that interested in there was a this is a time period where people just turned it they loved gossip and they started, you know, everything, yeah, yeah. TMZ, all of these things became National popular. National Enquirer started all this of, shit. Right. They they the they the start. But even Star, there, National Enquirer, all that motherfucker. But it wasn't on the level that shit is today. People loved the the T. Nah. What's the T? What's you know what I mean? Everybody wants to know what's going on. So that's where we live in and you gotta be at the same time you gotta know it's there, but you also have to be protective a little bit too of of what you wanna put out there, what you wanna say. That's why that leads back to what I was saying about T V. Yeah. Can you really be your real real you on T V because I refuse. I refuse to allow their fantasy to disrupt my reality. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I know who I am. I got a sense of self. I done been who I was. I done been who I am before I became who I, who, who I was. So I don't... Because we have to maintain some level of control. When we lose control, we allow that shit to control us. Mm -hmm. I can't do that. I can't say, well, no, let me not say. Well, no, let me not. Let me not be this because they might... Nah, man, fuck them. It, it is. is. This is true. This is true. This is true. This is true. Yeah, this is true. I mean, man, I think that, man, the evolution has been, I mean, it's, it's monumental to the people that we are still today. Right. Like, you wouldn't be able to sit here still today with the relevance that you maintain had you not gone through and learned the lessons from mm -hmm. the circumstances that, yeah, that you know what I'm saying, that you that went you through. through. You, you, you grow through what you go through. To. That's, right. that's, I mean, it all it's all relative and plays a part mm -hmm. in where you end up in this shit. So I think that's why I think artists like you should be celebrated because you didn't abandon your people. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people come up to me and they be like, yo, Tip, man, you still got the same niggas around you, man. God damn, that's dope. You ain't got them. You ain't, you ain't abandoned yet. I'm like, what the fuck, nigga? What, you, what I supposed to do? Yeah. They so used to it. They like, you know It's special I mean? that you didn't. <laughs> they so used to everybody just switching up and... That happens in the game. That happens. It, it, that I was just telling. I was, I was just telling Emily in the car. And then I was telling them about people being people managers, right? Uh. So managers can, cause for to be somebody manager, you almost got to be like selfless. It's all about the person that you manage. That's real. So you could you devote your life to building up this artist, taking care of their needs, making sure that they, you know, all of their things are handled. And then there's a, a point where artists can be like. I need something different. Something I want a bigger manager. I want a, you know what I mean? And there's really nothing you can do. Hmm. How you deal with that? Right there? Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's really, it's, it's, we've all had artists. Women artists are even more of a Whew. hassle. So, managing people is like really just managing personalities. Mm -hmm. You got to manage personalities. You got to, and behaviors, which is indicative. I think they, 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 <laughs> well, if you're a manager, period, make sure your paperwork is right because they can, they can, they can. Artists, yeah. 
They swap your ass out. Artists at any time, if they feel any situation might be better for them. It's always your fault. They're going to wasn't. And and as an artist, I would say, I've never, like, shifted anybody in that kind of situation. But any opportunity that is better for your career, of course you look at it. And you take heed to that. Like, like, is this something that can help me or hurt me? I've heard people even ask, like, um, ask me, like, well, why can't I never get into the, the, the bigger artist to get um, a bigger, like, to be big? He should be so much bigger than what he is. And I say, Stab is an artist that's been on a, on a, on a level playing field for 20 years. Yeah. There's not too many artists that can do that. So mm-hmm. do you want, so it's like, do you want uh, a year of being the hottest person or 20 years of being... Solid. Solid. I always look yeah. at my thing as my course is my course. That's this is real. the way it was supposed to go for That's me. That's real. I could have did a lot of different. I was a time where 50 was like, I want you to sign a G unit. Yeah. If I would have signed a G unit, what? I don't know which way my career would have went. Not saying it would have went better or worse. Yeah. I'm just mm-hmm. saying that's a change in your in Nobody your can out 50-50. Mm-hmm. Nobody can out 50 50. Mm-hmm. And that's what I told motherfucking Puff. Puff wanted to sign me, man, before trap music. In between, I'm serious in trap music. Puff, now, how would your career would have shifted if you'd have signed the Puff? I it would be a completely Puff, different. I told, Puff straight, I told Puff straight up and down. I say, bro, listen, um, I kind of got my own guys that's, you know what I mean, that I got coming with you me. got your system. And I can't necessarily tell them that now they need to listen to you. This is the same thing I told Meech, too, by the way. Um, I was like, yo, so um, I'm going to have to respectfully pass, but this is why. Because I know on Bad Boy, nobody will ever be bigger than you than you. Mm-hmm. Can't, I can't come to Bad Boy and expect to be bigger than Puff. Mm-hmm. If I'm gonna be bigger than Puff, I gotta do it on my own. That's it. How do you feel about with an artist when they sign to you? I mean, to be honest with you, I myself ain't necessarily an artist that I'm not trying to still be out there. I got so many other things. I can't wait to quit. I can't wait to quit. Like I, I got expeditiously. I got Family Hustle. I got film. I got other 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 means of television where I produce and like for real, you can have that look if you want it. I ain't really tripping off of it. Mm-hmm. Um, and if an artist don't sign to me, look at Travis Scott. Don't seem to didn't seem to hold him back. You know what I mean? It's the same for shit, Bob or, 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 or fucking Iggy or anybody else. I ain't never stood in the way of an opportunity for an artist. Mm -hmm. Not to say that Puff has, but I do know ain't nobody bigger than Puff on Bad Boy. Mm -hmm. Period. I can say something different for myself now that Travis Scott has came along. I can say shit, man. I introduced a motherfucking artist to the game that became bigger than me. Mm -hmm. And I'm proud of that. I'm proud of that. Bigger than me musically, not culturally, mm-hmm. but, you know, he got some years to go. Yeah, he still got time. He still. he still got time, man. In a decade or so, man, he probably will. He might got damn shit. Show me exactly how this shit supposed to be done. And I welcome, fast, I welcome him to do that. So even, like, uh, taking off the Travis thing, you see, not for him in particular, but do you believe their generation is creating, going to create artists who stand the test of time? Like, uh, I think... Their generation too is very of the moment because even the fan is of the moment. They shift faster than the artist. The artist, you know what I'm saying? Like they, the the fan is used to getting everything fast, so they don't. They even don't even commit to certain artists to look at them like I'm gonna be ten. Yeah, I don't. I don't know if I'm gonna like you ten years from now. I Man, like hurry up with the album, Uzi. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Hurry up, Uzi, with the album. I don't know if I'm going to like you five years from now. Man, I, I, seen, now. I seen a motherfucker cuss Young Thug got so bad on this timeline. Mm-hmm. He was like, you bitch-ass motherfucker, put the motherfucking album out before I pull up on you, bitch. Whoa, like, that kind of shit. <laughs> some, yeah, some, yeah, some, like, you know what I mean? Yo, bro. It's, it's about how you was raised. And guess what? How, how it's probably a little 10-year-old white kid. I mean, 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You can't but say do you, that. Do, 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 you, do you think you laugh that, at that shit? You, you know. almost got me. So thanks to this guy, this guy scared me into putting the album out. So, so it's bad and it's fast. Psychology. So as bad as bad as they want the music and as fast as they want the music, are they are they gonna are they gonna this generation are they gonna have guys who last decades and twenty years in the game and yeah, I think Thug will be here. Bobby Schmurter, I think around, I think Bobby yeah. Schmurter will be the defining. You know what I mean? He 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 will be the 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 defining moment well, of the generation. He's gonna, he's gonna be he's gonna be like is talent. He's gonna be celebrated. Yeah, it's talent. We recognize as artists in this generation. We recognize talent. And yeah, I got like, a question. I mean? Oh, what y'all gonna do when motherfucking uh, 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 Hernandez come home? You gotta tell. What y'all gonna do when Hernandez come home? Six nine game, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that nigga named Hernandez. Yeah, country, yeah, he's six nine is gonna be the same six nine. But old people don't live with morals and principles no more. Yeah, Besides right. the dinosaurs like He ain't gonna live in New York no more. Huh? I don't think you're gonna live in New York. Bobby's gonna be you don't need New York. York. I, that's what I'm saying. I don't think you're gonna Bobby's live in New York. Bobby's coming home Bobby's too. Home time, they? they coming home around the same time. Bobby's Bobby Schmurder and Hernandez <laughs> coming home around the same time. The way this generation is, they gonna fuck with six nine more than they fuck with Bobby. Right. You know what? That's true. That's the I, that's bad what I part. Said. Of this. And that's, and that's why I'm asking y'all the question. That. That's why I'm asking y'all the question about this generation. Is they making solid staple artists or they just of whatever is, this and this is gonna happen too. Six nine could come home and and don't have the same lore if he not nah, having he, a theatrics. He, he if, unless like he unless he does the theatrics that he was doing when he he's not going he buzzing like a motherfucker. He, go he got he to. He buzzing. What are you gonna come home doing? Chill. He, <laughs> he gonna come home and chill. Yeah, he coming home and chilling. He coming. He gonna come home and chill. He gonna chill. Yeah, he, he gonna come home and chill. He gonna come home, he dye his hair back, and do, start doing nah. the same thing. Nah, I'm gonna tell you if why. If you don't, he not gonna pop. I'm gonna tell you why. I'm gonna tell you why. He on probation. I'm gonna tell you why. He on probation. <laughs> Yeah. Probation is even better. Yeah. 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 Let me ask you a question, though. Go ahead. Would this be the same thing as if, if, if a white artist was was doing this? Like, do like nah. we grew up, we grew up, we grew up a different nah. way where where snitching is a bad thing. So we, tell you we why. found upon it. But this generation, tell with you our why. kids and stuff, do you want your kid to go to jail for for something that man, everybody else look, do? Man, let me tell you something. Like, first of all, nah, look, let me tell you something. First of all, nah, I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you why. There's some young dinosaurs out here. If I may, if I may, if I may. But look, if I if I may, you're right. It's far and few in between. But if I may, this is why shit is more. It resonates more to us. First of all, the police began as slave catchers. The idea of police, the idea of sheriffs, policemen, goddamn, uh, uh, making sure people obey the law. They began as slave catchers, so runaway slaves. Was over, like overseer. And you know what I mean? Over, and they turned it into yeah. officer. Okay, so, but that's, but that's why. Okay, so <laughs> if the first motherfuckers who snitched were people who told on runaway slaves. Right. That motherfucker, they that motherfucker they finna be, run away. They thought they would make themselves better yeah. because if they told on yeah. somebody else. They finna and that's run, what boss. snitching is. They finna run, boss. Right, I heard a plan last night. I heard, yeah. You ever seen one of the movies yeah. that they on the slaves? <laughs> See, so that's why. <laughs> good, good nigga. <laughs> Get this nigga some grits. Get this nigga some grits. Did y'all watch the Harry movie? Get that uh-uh. nah, nah. I ain't watch it. I ain't watch it. I heard that shit went. Yo, no let me good. tell you something though. I heard they be make, they be good movies. Them slave movies upset me though. I was you leave roots. out of them shits angry a little bit. You don't even see. Hey, look, I was in Roots, right? What? Nah, say, did you want your keys, sir? Hey, look, right? So I was in Roots, right? I was in the new adaptation of Roots. Uh, Will Packer called me personally, asked me to be in it, and I was like, eee. Mm-hmm. I was like, look, man, one motherfucking, one motherfucking condition. Ain't no white man gonna tell me what the fuck to do. Mm-hmm. So whoever my character is, 
ain't no white man finna tell me what to do. I'm not finna, I ain't, I ain't yes or master, no, I ain't finna say master or boss to no motherfucking body. Did you, did, have you ever, have you ever, yeah, hey, have you ever imagined, <laughs> hey, have you, have you, have you ever you imagined made, yourself hey, in them times? <laughs> have you ever imagined yourself in them times? Like, what, what, like be you know dead. how some people be, be like, I'd have been dead. Be dead. Be dead. They the kid. Yeah, yeah. Man, I'd be dead. But they got, look, it's it's a lot of, and Black History Month coming up, man. And, and you know, and it's leap year, so we get an extra day. And mind you guys, it's leap year, so we get, uh, uh, our ladies are supposed to see about us for Valentine's Day. Uh-huh. It's leap year. Don't miss out. Oh, yeah. Don't miss out. They're supposed to see about us for Valentine's Day. Nobody's shit. broadcasting that. Yeah, they well, that. hero right. expeditiously. Right. As a matter of fact, I tell you, learn what, something up here. We're gonna motherfucker uh-huh. turn. Okay, well that's that one. We're gonna turn this motherfucker. Huh? No, nah, that one good enough. There yeah. we go. Now nah, this shit the same thing. All right, mm-hmm. well, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So we're going to change the color in this motherfucker. Blue and red, not for Crips and Bloods, but because <laughs> <laughs> but because they come together to make purple. Mm-hmm. And, and purple is a, is a royal color, but also a sexy color. And this year, fellas, we must maintain our sexy by making sure that our ladies see about us mm-hmm. like we see about them all the other years that ain't leap year. You know what I'm saying? I'm I'm not, I'm not going I'm not going for it. I, I, now, I, I, hey, I'm gonna tell you something else. Do you know about Steak and BJ Day? What? I heard about it. I heard about Steak it. Steak and BJ Day. I heard about it. It's our day. Well, nigga, he's a vegan. <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> vegan. <laughs> Glad you ain't got a mic. God damn. Pause. Hey man. <laughs> Hey, we'll get wet though. We'll get wet. If you happen, if you happen to not eat steak, steak. Clarify, clarification. You can enjoy. You can enjoy red snapper and red copper cone. Yeah, red snapper day. Red snapper. Oh, excuse me. You can enjoy red snapper at Copper Cove. Uh, but 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 steak and BJ day. Steak and BJ day. Look, listen, man. I think it's March fourteenth. Yes, and the ladies uh, are are supposed to invite their significant others to a steak and a BJ. Now, you can enhance these, you know, gestures as much as you want to, and you can change it however you want. Hey, look, man, if you don't really want a steak so much... I mean, you'd be a fool to turn down the BJ, but yeah. <laughs> I'm not with these. I'm not. I'm not with these. Hey, you dig what I'm, I'm saying? Not, I'm not. I'm not just, I ain't capping. I am with these days. I think we. I think we gotta like enjoy and treat each other. Yeah, yeah. whenever it, it like for you. nothing for you know some time. Like it, it's it's, it's getting to that point because like we we said when we was talking about the time and family and love and yep. you know and. And not missing opportunities. I think we gotta steak and BJ day could be any day. Anything. Like you know what I'm saying? Well, like, <laughs> yes. You know what I'm saying? Hey, look, wait a minute. I wanna feel like what I wanna feel like I can have true. that any day. Like, what whatever. you're saying <laughs> What you're saying you know is what? true. Crazy. What you're saying is true. However Now I'm hungry and horny, yo. <laughs> <laughs> what you're saying is absolutely true, but given, you know, like the laws of reciprocity are in order. We must feel that we are receiving the same energy. I like that. I want that. that I we're believe exuding. I believe in happy spouse, happy house, not happy wife, happy life. Cuz I believe that we should make each other happy. Uh I mean we on a men podcast so I'm going to just say it. I mean, some people going to be mad at that, no, but like I believe let's make each other happy. I am with you, bro. I am with you. How many other people going to ride with us? Okay. I don't know, but yeah. I'm with you. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm not you, saying bro. it's wrong to make your wife happy. I'm saying nah. let's let's make each other happy and the house going to be happy. Yeah, yeah man. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. I got a couch for you. Oh. I got a couch for you. <laughs> <laughs> 
You remember that Martin episode? <laughs> boo <Boo-boo! laughs> <laughs> Nigga stuck it out for like a day or two. Nigga like, I miss my girl. Hey, <laughs> hey, you know what? Speaking of which, speaking of which, now, all right, so tell me, why do you guys think it is that when a black man finds, uh, finds solitude in a white woman's company, he's ridiculed. Mm. However, when a black woman or a woman of color finds solitude in a white man's company, she's mm. finally found her her mate, mm-hmm. mm. and it's celebrated. Yeah, it's bugged out. You know it's just the, it's the way I think that there's certain things. You know, everybody wants equality, but there's certain things that are just different. And taken from different perspectives. I just ain't really got over necessarily how people treated Michael B. Jordan for saying what he liked. Mm -hmm. But then how everybody celebrated when Cassie went and got a white man. Mm -hmm. And not to say I wish Cassie and her 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 significant other, I, I I wish them the most happiness life has to offer. But I'm talking. I'm not talking about them. They did nothing wrong. You cannot. You can't help who you fall in love with. I ain't talking about them. I'm talking about how the world responded yeah. to their decision. Because I think it's a world, financial thing. Yeah. No, and nah, it can't be. Like she was just a, always going to be a little girlfriend to the world. Right. So, when so they celebrated her there, like in. Like leveling up, finally found somebody that just want her for her. Okay. Well, <laughs> I like things equal. What about Christina like Milian and her white guy? We didn't even hear about her. <laughs> <laughs> nah, man, but it's a real thing. Even even going down to cheating, right? Even going down to cheating, and we ain't gonna we gonna, we gonna touch on this very lightly with white gloves. But when a man cheats, is oh that bastard? How mm-hmm. could he? What the fuck? What did he do? And if it's the woman, it's. Well, she finally found enough strength. He pushed, mm-hmm. he pushed, he pushed her to, her that. to that point. Wow. Okay, so okay, so because I right, because if a man says you're not giving me everything I need, then it's I'm not your superwoman. I can't do it all, right? But if a man ain't giving a woman what she needs, then he's less of a man. How in the hell can we talk about equality when all things aren't treated equally? That's the problem I be having because everybody wants equality, but things are not. It'll the never scale be is not equal. Even. It's never. E- it's not equal. We want it to be, and and everybody is like vocal about it being it, but it doesn't. It the don't. Scale don't the scale don't weigh up. It don't and I up. always tell women this: is what I tell them, and uh, my wife ain't here. Okay, um, this is what I always tell women. Um, I say, what's up, the money? Shout out to the money, man. My my favorite weirdo just strolled in. You know what I'm saying? Fresh off the spaceship. So I always tell, I tell women, I say, listen, I got some bad news for you. Women will never be equal. And they say, oh, oh, there you go with that chauvinist shit again. Oh, I can't believe he said that. I say, well, would you like to hear why? And they say, yeah, tell me why. Because you're greater. So imagine my surprise. Somebody who's greater. Women are here in my eyes. Mm -hmm. Men are here. Mm -hmm. And women are fighting to be equal. Mm-hmm. That shit don't make no fucking sense to me. Mm-hmm. They don't look at it like that. I know they don't. They so busy fighting. <laughs> they so busy fighting. No, they won't. No, they won't. No, they won't lie. No, they won't. It ain't that easy. No, 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 no. No, no that's you trying to here. control me. You no, no. <laughs> reverse psychology on me. No, 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 no. I heard this shit. I heard it all before. No, no. They gonna get to play a Sunshine Anderson on yeah. But now, real deal, women are up here, men are down here, and women are asking to be equal, which in my mind is reducing themselves to be on the same level as men. And I don't know, like, I believe in separate but equal. I believe that 
you should have equal consideration. You know what I'm saying? But the thing is, we both have different strengths, different weaknesses. So we shouldn't be... I was stronger than Of course they are. Yeah. Of course they are. And, it, like, emotionally, mm-hmm. of course they are. Even what they mentally, have to deal with. Mentally, of course, of course, mentally. of course, yeah. of course. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I can see that. Um, I think that... I think that men have not done a good enough job at supporting women when they needed the support most. Uh, And that is what has pushed women. Like, behind every crazy ass, like, a woman that didn't make no sense, it was a nigga that dogged her motherfucking ass out and left her behind. And we don't know. We don't see that nigga. All we see is the results of what he left behind. We see what he left behind. See the scars. You dig what I'm saying? And I mean, I get that. You know what I mean? This is also true. Get the mic. Get the mic, Rugs. What you say, Rugs? Yeah. Hey, a good nigga. Hey, get the dog and they, hey, but look, why they celebrate savages on the female side? They celebrate savages. They celebrate savagery when it's more when it's feminine. Eight. But then when it's when it's me. And guess what? I've never seen or heard of a, a gay female who got cheated on by another female. And say women ain't shit. They ain't nothing but dogs. Wow. I've never seen that. Wow, What's I've never seen that. Chick is, um, the basketball chick. Let me look it up. She just left her marriage. Um, no, now that's a woman telling me to wrap it up. Okay, cool. Okay, you don't want me to talk about this. Okay, now Dana want me to wrap it up. Okay, Dana. All right, Dana. Yeah, hey, hey, wrap this up. Wrap this up. All right? Now, how about that? Yeah, yeah. We on y'all hairline now. You don't want... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, 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 hey. Control your edges. Don't control me. Now, if I may, if I may continue on, if I may continue on. Now, just a few just rapid fire questions, man. If you're a president, who's in your cabinet? Give me the top five. And if you want to give me roles, that's cool, too. If I was president, who's in my Who's in your cabinet? Uh, Like, who's your vice president? Who's your secretary of defense? You know what I'm saying? Like, 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 who's your attorney general? Who you going to have? To fill the roles of the 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 cabinet to represent. I have two of them in here. Yeah, I might have rugs and rude with me. Okay. All right. All right. What they gonna do though? I don't know. We got to figure they got to figure it. <laughs> See, that's what niggas do. Out. But I know they got somewhere. I know. I know they got a position. Yeah, Rugs want to be in the Department of Treasury. <laughs> no, nah, he he visited the strip club a little too much to be in the Treasury Department. So, um, hey man, yeah, I'm actually coming there. Yeah, yeah. Rule look like, hey, look, Cuz look like the the Secretary of Defense. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? He like he want to, you know. I, I, hey, listen. Rube would talk you down off some shit. I might have Fendi in there. That's too. the Secretary of Defense yeah, need that. Yeah. I wish that's I the wish best Fendi, part of defense. I wish Fendi was here, man. My 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 guy, Big Fendi. I would have him in there. Okay, he's, he's a he's an old school guy, but he he's like what Clay is on your. Oh side. hell yeah! Clay is my guy. You need you yeah, need yeah. those type of guys. I think Big the... Fendi is a little more mild mannered, a little more rational what? than Clay. Clay, what? no, you don't know Clay. No, you don't know Clay. No, I know Clay as a high head, but you said. Rational and yeah, like, nah, that, nah, he's not rational. At all. Yeah, but compared to Clay, listen, I not mean, in comparison, I mean, but just they fight. both, huh? You remember when I met Clay at Compound, me and him about to fight. Everybody, nah. knew I, I seen know. Clay about to fight. <laughs> <laughs> I seen Clay about to fight uh, Floyd one time, just at dinner, and just like, yeah. That is over been, a joke, like not even on hey, no man. That That's shit has he, been. He'll do that. He'll yeah. play one of the people that'll strike and still be in conversation. Yeah. I ain't mean to slap you, bro. We <laughs> <laughs> See, I ain't even want to do that. Yeah, shit. Like, <laughs> hey man, the Harrises and the Mayweathers are like the Capulets and the Montagues at this point. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? One day, man, we'll both evolve beyond our differences. But I don't have a real like a problem with bruh personally. It's just I don't like his style. I don't like the shit he do. It's just not, you know what I'm saying, as far as the type of person that I'd like to keep company with, I don't think 
It, we just not for each other. As a black man, I wish him the best, hope him all the success in the world, but we just not for each other. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So Clay probably has been in a position where he's had to inhale and exhale that energy, mm-hmm. and he don't really take to that shit well. You know, mm-hmm. Clay was like, nigga, I don't give a fuck, nigga. Fuck that shit you and this nigga got. Whatever the fuck you want to do, nigga. Mm-hmm. That's how Clay get out, which is what I'm saying. See, Clay in my cabinet, mm. man, Clay got to, I, I mean, he man. He going to be there, though? He definitely going to be there. Yeah. <laughs> I got to make a position for Clay. Yeah. I got to make a position for Clay, but I got to goddamn make sure that it's somebody that he totally respects that he has to check in with before he make, before he push the button. I can't just give him open access to the button. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you dig what I'm saying? <laughs> what, nigga? <laughs> Dumb. <laughs> you know what I mean? But at the same time, I know him, love him, and trust him enough to where I know he got my best interest at heart. And if he did push that button, it because he felt like he had to. He just didn't consider all the contingencies we had. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I would ask you who would be your speaker, but I feel like you're the speaker. Nah. You're the, you're, nobody articulates what they feel and what they're going through or what they want to say better than you. So you know that that person, you know that person that comes, not Trump or whoever, the person that comes and comes to the pedestal and says, "Oh, look, yeah, this there's somebody on each team." But, that, see, but that, I can't see anybody on your team that does that better than you, man. But see, that's the thing, though, man, because that's what I can't afford to do mm. as president. To just content, to just like you know, say the things that I feel and just rat, rattle off my thoughts and emotion with complete candor, without any kind of filtration. Um, who would I? I probably. Hmm. You couldn't have Clay do that. Absolutely not. <laughs> I might. <laughs> I feel like I mean, Fendi man. is a good talker, but I, at the same time, I still like think right. that he can. I might put Dina. I might do Dina. I might tell Dina. I might have well, Dina go out and, you know what I'm saying? Like I might well, tell Dina to go Lenny, and speak. Lenny for would me. be mine. Lenny, yeah, Lenny S. Yes. Yeah, like, oh yeah, Lenny S yes, is a good speaker. That's a good speaker. I might let Dina go out, man, and say. Just so I can come out and say, man, I ain't say that shit. Mm. I ain't say that shit. Give a damn. Whatever you heard, mm. fuck that shit. Mm-hmm. This what we doing. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to get her out there to test my thoughts. So I'm going to get out there. And, and if, if <laughs> Now she's really saying wrap it up. So if, if if the shit didn't motherfucking go over as I thought it would, and I, I come out there like, man, she talking that bullshit. It what we really going to do. Uh now, have you heard that 50 Cent has acknowledged Black Mambas, uh, Tragic Death, Long Live, Kobe, and Gigi? But he's acknowledged Black Mambas, Tragic Death as a wake-up call for himself and how he deals with people. He claims he he claims he going to stop trolling and beefing with folk. Um, first of all, how much do you believe 50? And how has the loss of Kobe impacted you? I mean, I believe, I, I I believe it until I don't believe it or can't believe that it. That is an excellent strategy. That's the kind. I like, believe mentality. it until I don't believe it. That's what the fuck I'm saying. Mm-hmm. <laughs> hey man, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. You know what I'm saying? All heroes don't wear capes. Then man, Jay gave us game. I believe it until I don't believe it. I love the shit out of that. Continue on, sir. And I think, um, like we just talked about, Kobe's death is going to spark things from people in different ways. And maybe that sparked up. But I'm sure he's going to have tests, too. You know what I'm saying? Everything that we say that we don't want to do no more, you're definitely going to get a test to see if you don't want to do that. You will be tested. You You know what I'm saying? You will be tested. Like, I, I, everything, you're going to, everything that you're trying to step away from or, I don't know. It's it's, yeah. it's it's you know what I mean. I talk to I talk to uh, people every day, and they you know they on a certain course in life, and then they say, "Yo, this happened." I'll be like, "Man, that's that's the the, the devil's giving you a taste of it." Absolutely. And if you if you still if you still lo- yeah yeah that's it. 
I man. said that to Rue last night. I said that to Meek on the phone the other day. Uh, Meek said, you know, I just came from about some meetings. You, so you talking about when, 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 when he went through the shit, when man, Nicky when he ran store, into right? Yeah, I spoke to him about that. If you see a picture that Gazi posted, and, and I was kind of like, you know what I'm saying, in the midst of a conversation, it was me, Meek, Jim Jones, and Gazi. And I was basically telling them, hey, look, bro, you done worked your way too far mm-hmm. up the totem pole, man. You even looked that mm-hmm. far back down. You know what I'm saying? But you and still got to be tested. If you deserve Absolutely. to be on that totem pole, you Absolutely. still gotta be like you're gonna be like here. If you don't, Absolutely. if you say I don't want to drink no more, they all out of nowhere, all the bottles and stuff. You did. They gonna be right there and say, yo, you say you don't want to drink. Yeah, no more. when you say I'm faithful, and then all the yeah. bitches, you come out of bitches. Yeah. Come all of the fucking hard eyes going your DMs man. and all that thing. It's, it's, it's not hard eyes. I'm talking about man. Anyway, so yeah. <laughs> so, and when I say look that far down, I'm not talking about like. Looking down at this person as 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 in him being beneath Meek, mm-hmm. I'm talking about look that far down into that type of behavior. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Looking that far down into like because Meek would have to reduce himself to engage. You know what I'm saying in that kind of shit. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think that you know he's come so far and now he's a. He's a fucking a representative for prison reform. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? He's he he he's an entrepreneur. He he fucking uh uh he has is it is it New Era or Lids? Is it Lids? Lids. Lids. He's a partner in Lids. Man, he, he got a, a movie coming out just in March. making it, bro. Like he a representative for just coming from And fucking, the nigga, hey, the nigga beat the judicial system. Just make yeah, for the black nigga just coming up that, and though. and don't let them take that from you from, from something that, that small. And I was just telling them shit, man. Next time, man, let the video be of you laughing. Mm-hmm. Of you just laughing. You know what I'm saying? Just laugh at that shit, man. Enjoy your beautiful life. Uh, but it's easier said than done. I give great advice. I give great advice. You don't always take your own advice, though. Yeah, I don't, man. I don't. I don't. You're, yeah, not, you're yeah. not great at taking your hey, own advice. I'm good as long as so niggas leave me alone. Man. It embarrassed too many too yeah. many people stuck their neck out for me, even yeah. thinking about engaging that right now. Yeah, but right look down. Motherfucker don't put their hands on you, meek. Fuck what Keep they talking gone. about. Yeah. yeah, I feel that. That's real as shit. It ain't like you scared, because we would all the bullshit, but it's just yeah. like yeah, you came too far, man. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like no matter what somebody doing. It's a weird test though, man. It is feel like once you get to that point. Going what's the greatest tested. what's the greatest test you've experienced the greatest test that i've experienced um because you've been through a lot Bad with all I, this shit. I know it but <laughs> I, hey i, I, I know it but that's not right i never promote i come from a different school of it like i come from a school the the like i'm not trying to promote i'm not here to you know what i mean not even saying every sometimes it's, you got to react on the moment and the you moment you got to handle your business but sometimes it's like you got this one. Yeah. yeah. There's two levels of booking. But I'm going to get the next one. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And that's... And I'm going to get the one nobody going to see. Right. Yeah. And I've always been a part of that school, that so yeah, I've always that been a part of that school that I'm not yeah. trying to, like, do it and get caught. And I'm that's the thing, right? But see, see, that's the thing. Like, a real gangster, most of his best work are go unseen. Mm-hmm. Nobody will ever know he did it. I know it. That's exactly what I'm just saying. A lot of motherfuckers want to do their best work and be seen doing it. Mm -hmm. And them the motherfuckers end up in prison. Mm -hmm. Or they tell on somebody and get out. They tell on (laughs) themselves. They put put everything down. My greatest test, though, was me finding balance for my family. That makes sense. That's that's ever. At this point in my whole throughout my career, I've just had it my way. Yeah. But it's not all that. At this point, it's not just about having it my way. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I mean, we have all. to we have to be willing to share in order to really enjoy. Mm-hmm. You did. Now, I don't know if any of you uh, heard this shit, man, but. That was an MSNBC anchor, Allison Morris. Oh, yeah, we did that. Yeah. She said that on the thing. <laughs> Who apologized later. But I don't believe that shit. Mm-mm. 
The bitch said, hold up. No, no, nah, nah, we finna get up with now. Nah, we finna get gangster with this shit now. Uh, d- d- listen, listen here. He, let, let me tell you what the bitch said. The bitch said she made a racial slur during a live broadcast shortly after we found out that Kobe Bryant had, had perished and his daughter. So she said he was a perfect fit for the Los Angeles niggas. And she said she was trying to mix Knicks with Lakers. Nah, mm-hmm. She made Fuck a mistake. Fuck out of here. She made a mistake. That's what she's saying. She oh. made a mistake. Lakers. Nakers. They wrote, they wrote she, that said she said niggas. She said niggas. Yo, first of all, first of all, niggers don't even sound like niggas. Nah. She said niggas, man. Now, wait a minute. So we ain't got the goddamn guess what she said. Let's hear it. Yeah, it seems like he was just the kind of athlete, the kind of star that was perfectly cast on the Los Angeles Nakers, Los Angeles Lakers Kavita. She said, ooh, ooh. You didn't hear the ooh-ooh? Hey. Yo. Yeah. Hey, listen, man. Propaganda. She was already thinking some niggas. Yeah, yeah that shit I might. It was on the head. Propaganda is upon us. Don't they little niggas? Why is niggas so important that we doing emergency broadcasts about them more? Why do they always give me the nigga reports? I think that was how she was thinking before she walked up there and said that shit. Here's the thing, though. Do you think they're going to let her slide? No. no, not if enough people nah, make enough noise. Nah, nah, but she's she gonna get a pat on the back. Whatever. Nah, but she she gonna get fired from there and hired get, somewhere or, else. Or, or she'll get fired. Fox and pay gonna scoop shit. her right up. Yeah, come on. Yeah. Man. It ain't gonna be no. Or she just ain't gonna be on front line no more. Her life, yeah, her life ain't gonna. Her, her, her life ain't gonna change. This is another at all. sneaky thing. I told everybody that about this situation yesterday. Racism breed racism. I looked at her followers when she first before right as she. Right. She had 1,100 followers. A what? When I look back by the end of the day, she has 16,000. God damn. All the racist people. <laughs> yeah. Whoa. They embrace Whenever the you see some kind of scandal they or any kind of racism, always look at that. If go find me and get fired, she, she going to have 8 million in it. You dig what I'm saying? That's Trump had the most money to be supporting his thing. You know what I'm saying? Like... Yeah. All of that racism shit y'all saying, but he he pulled the most money together because there's certain people who secretly they behind they they support it. Yeah, I'm gonna Look tell you. Much, look how much money they gave Zimmerman for his. For, for they support it. Man, they support it. That's it. As many racism people, supports racism. As many people getting killed. Racism support racism. As many that's people simple. as many people there are dying in Philly, getting killed. Many people there are dying in Chicago. Many people there are dying in Oakland, in New Orleans, in Detroit, you know what I mean, in Atlanta. Uh, What I want to say is, we've been practicing on each other for a long time. Mm. When we going to get in the game and do some shit that really counts? They done did everything it is to do. And when I say that, I mean the perpetrators of evil. You ain't got to put a color on that. You ain't got to put a face on that. You ain't got to put a name on that. Let's just say the perpetrators of evil have been doing as much as they can to provoke us. They've kidnapped our daughters. They've raped our mothers. They've slammed our grandmothers down backs to the street on the concrete. They've treated us as subhuman as one could expect to be treated. What will it take for us to take what we have learned in our practicing on each other? And, I mean, you know, all right, that's all I had to say. Uh, (laughs) I just... They the mind of black people. They did, a long time ago. And that's the power right there. They weaken the mind of black people. We need anymore. unity. That's what it is. We should leave. We we gotta leave it on unity. That's real. That's now, now, because just because we were talking about this lady, Allison Morris, who who later apologized, I must say, I don't believe her. If you do, then that's cool. But I ain't gonna get into whether she did it or not, or she meant to do it or not. But what I want to know from you is, what do you wish? the people covering our stories would say about our people. 
our heroes and legends, but never do. Um, I think they need to say more. Mm, I don't think it's. I don't think it's. Uh, I never think the positive is shared as much as the negative. Mm. So that's why I say more. Got you. I mean, I think. I really think one of two things need to happen. One, either they need to actually research, understand, and acknowledge the contribution our people have made to society. Or they need to get the fuck out the way off the camera and let one of our people do it. Speak mm-hmm. for us. Yeah. Yeah. You dig what I'm saying? That would be the best thing. Like, quit speaking for them, man. Quit putting these white folk who don't care nothing about us. And I'm not talking about the nice white people who are in the room with us right now because these are nice white people. These are honest, fair, and decent white people <laughs> that I know, love, and appreciate. So I ain't talking about them. But I'm talking about the pretentious, uh, the fucking... Privileged and, 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 and entitled motherfuckers that they have to tell our stories like when, when, when it like the Grammys, which brings me to Puff's speech. Mm-hmm. But before I get there, uh, our people should tell our stories, our people should represent us. You know what I'm saying? And if that isn't happening, I feel like that's a disservice to us. Yeah, well, as long as anybody else tell your story, they create the narrative. Mm. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? When you want to change the narrative of yourself, you got to do it. You dig what I'm saying? Nobody else is going to do that for you. That's the reason we introduced the Trap Music Museum to the world, because we wanted to make sure we told the story of trap music before anyone else could. Mm -hmm. You're absolutely correct. Mm -hmm. Man, I want to say, man, thank you. I'm going to say thank you, man, for coming and sharing this moment here expeditiously with us. Man, uh, I want to come back. Man, absolutely. <laughs> shit, man, you can be a guest you, host, man. You do, you're do. pretty I fucking would, good at this shit. I would love to. Hell yeah, man. I want to thank Bryce. You know what I'm saying? I want to thank all of, <clears throat> all of the motherfucking family mm-hmm. that came in this motherfucking representative was five, nigga. Yeah, you got it. Nigga. Hey, hey, look, is this nigga still is this nigga still allowed in Brooklyn? This nigga still can go to Brooklyn for real? You know what I'm saying? Rude, can he go to Brooklyn? I'm sure he can. Okay, all right, cool. All right, cool. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. We good, everything's good. Off back in the days. Yeah, I know, but that don't matter. <laughs> once a nigga go, once a nigga leave, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> nigga, you leave, you come back. You don't get the crazy points like you had back in the day. You, but he what? just left though. Yeah. That's what you come on, man. That's not man. Alright. Well listen, man. Thanks, Rugs. <laughs> Thanks, Rude. Thank you everybody, man, who came in this motherfucker. Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. One more thing. Yeah, we we have a tradition here. All right. No. <clears throat> you dig what I'm saying? <laughs> now, <laughs> now, now we have we have a we have a tradition here at Expeditiously, and that tradition is the word of the week. Uh, the word of the week is usually a word that comes from the conversation or that comes from the guest, uh, and is indicative of the vibe that we share today. The word that we chose for today is perspicacious. Yes, perspicacious. The definition, having a ready insight into an understanding of things. Now, what I do right now is I use it in a sentence. So you can go to work tomorrow, man, stand around the water cooler, act like you done known the word your whole fucking life. Um, Throughout his life and career, Fabulous has proven to be a perspicacious father and entertainer. I appreciate you, brother. I appreciate your contribution to the culture. Thank you, man. Hey, man, thank you for being Salute an example to, to the next generation and an example to me, man, because, shit, when you came out, my shit wasn't doing what I wanted it to do, mm-hmm. and I motherfucking, I, I kicked that shit in high gear mm-hmm. because you were my motivation at the time. So thank I appreciate you, you, man. Salute, Then man. and now, man, you Salute, still a man. solid dude. Love and respect. Always. And this has been Expeditious. <laughs>
Watch your favorite episodes of Expeditiously right now on the Expeditiously YouTube page.